there's a growing suspicion out there. Some call it a fear that maybe there is more to this Christian life than we've ever been told. We can feel it. We sense it every week, every day. Yet many of us continue to live our Christian version of the American dream with a little church attendance thrown in on Sundays and maybe a weekly Bible study when it fits our schedule. Is this what Jesus came to die for? Is this it? Is this all there is? Will our neighbors, our friends, our children participate in a faith that is centered only on a weekly meeting? Will they abandon the church altogether? Millions have, and thousands more do every week. But people are alone and desire truth and community in the ways God created them to be. What if we could live out our lives wrapped up in gospel truth, on a journey with others in community? A life lived together that shows the world what God is like. Communities where disciples are made in the everyday stuff of life, where many people find new life with Jesus. What if our cities were increasingly filled with gospel communities that lived out God's mission, inviting everyone to be a part of His forever family? We are the church. In reaching out to others, we find life, the life God always intended, the gospel with flesh on, together in community, on mission with God. We are the church. Our vision is to see one missional community per 1,000 people in your city so that everyone, everywhere, will have the opportunity to experience the fullness of the gospel and all that Jesus lived and died to give us in their own life, in their neighborhood, in their families. It starts with one. You are the church. But this can be hard. Together we can learn and grow forward. The GCM Collective is the largest community of missional practitioners in the world. It is made up of people just like you. You are the church. Together we can learn, grow, experience the gospel and community on mission. One missional community for every 1,000 people in our cities. Love your city. Love your neighbors. Like Jesus. Gospel Communities on Mission. You are the church. I am the church. I am the church. I am the church. We can, we can 
melt chocolate and <laughs> mix them up in there and let them set. We'll have chocolate covered coffee. And so he said, let's let's try one. And he you know how he says I'm a wuss and I don't try anything. She ate one. He goes, try it. Are you like, serious? I like chocolate. I like coffee. Oh, don't ever don't eat do a coffee bean do all it. by itself. It's a nice little boost. It was like, it's I nice. need a toothbrush. Like, ew, it's nasty, right? It's yeah. nasty. But we do have some coffee. We'll get you all yeah. waking up in the So if any of you guys have um, a coffee bean grinder at home, and you, you can want have this bag of the beans, the first person that comes to me after church day, you can have that bag That's right. Of it's in my office. We don't have a grinder. Medium blend Starbucks is yeah, awesome. Hey!
teach your kids how to pray at the table, but then you nourish your family at the table. And then you start dialoguing. How's life going? How's it going? How, what's, what's going on in your world? And we ask our kids this crazy question we started years ago, and that is, tell me the best part of your day and the worst part of your day. And we do it every day. Right? I mean, it's like, think of a new question. But we did this when they were little, and so what it does is it gets people to open up at the table. And they tell us the best part of their day, and we get to celebrate, whatever that is. But then they start telling us the worst, and we find out the bad things that may have happened to them that day. And so then we get a counsel at the table, and we get to help them realize, what does God's word have to say about somebody picking on you at school? What does God's word say about you being the person picking on somebody else at school? What does God's word have to say about whatever you're going through right now? And all of that, guys, takes place at the table. Some of you guys are like, man, we need to get a table. Right? <laughs> all of that takes place at the table. So this morning, we are in this series at the table. We threw out a challenge to you guys last week. We said we were going to give a $100 bill next week to the family that has the best dinner selfie. Now, we challenged you to go out to a restaurant if you're, if you're going to brave it, right? Depending on the size of your family. But you know what? You can do it at your home table. I wouldn't advise it. Or you can do it out to dinner. But I want to tell you that last Sunday, we decided we were going to braid it. Now, some of you guys, you're going to throw it up there for us. This is our big family, and not that whole table. Like, it, there, was a, there was a transition point in there. Sometimes our family is so big, it feels it like it. It does feel like it. But the whole you can just leave that there for one second. I want to tell you, a few weeks ago, we took just our boys to the same restaurant. Anybody know where that's at? Rancho. Rancho. Why is that? Why is that? Because I love Rancho and it happened to be Mother's Day. you're boring. I am boring. So, we had no intention whatsoever of going out to dinner that night. None. None. Still. We did church. We ran down and had lunch with my parents. We went to the Osho and we, Brent and I actually had to go back to work and we worked Sunday evening with our kids for a few hours. And then they were like, Mom. We want to treat you to dinner. I'm like, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. When those four faces start looking all sweet. Like angels? Yes, like That's angels. Like, and you, you know something about that? And they what said, Mom, like oh, please, we really, sure? it's Mother's Day. Dad, we got to take Mom out to dinner. And they're like, Mom, what do you want to do? Well, you know in those moments, Mom, when you're like, shoot me. Like, I just want to go home and go to bed, right? But your kids want to do something different. So I'm like, yeah, I would love to go out for another day. You're good, Mom. They're like, Mom, we'll pay. I'm like, sure you will. So we drive. We drive from all the way. Well, we were at Goodman. We drove from Goodman all the way to Grove because there's nothing decent to eat in the ocean. I don't, don't have anything that. there. Could be. I don't know of anything that I would like. Because, because I'm boring. Exactly. Out. So we drive all the way back to the restaurant I know I like. And we go in and we sit down and I'm like, you guys I'm know sure the I'm sure there's some great restaurants in the ocean, but we would not know. We're not going to know. Because yeah. you're boring. So we go in and we take our seats at the table. And they all know the rule. It's like, don't embarrass your mom at the table. That's the rule. This place was packed out. It was okay? Mother's Day. Who in their right mind goes out on Mother's Day, right? We did. We're stupid. So we go in. We all sat down. <sighs> Brad, let's take a selfie. Before it gets crazy and the food comes and we dump something, let's take a selfie. We gotta be a good example for the church. Brad gets ready to pull out the phone. And about that time, Mia goes to reach for something. And hold on. <laughs> How do you hold on in the middle of it? I'm better at some of it. Um <laughs> Look at the water glasses here. See this water glass closest to you over here in the picture? This one right here? That's one tall dude. That water's like that tall. About that big around. It was full of ice all the way to the top and full of water. Cold limon, right at the top. And and Mia was reaching for a napkin or something. I'm sorry, let me just tell what it was. And she goes, and she hit it and it goes. Now dads, when they when things like this happen, especially in public, everything you see is in slow motion. And I, all I saw was like a like a like a redwood tree falling, and I'm like, you're too And 
the water is like just covering the table. I mean, it's not only the table. So it's straight, and then into our laps. Then into our laps. And we all look all like over we the floor. Wear our pants. <laughs> great. And then me and space goes. Because <laughs> this happened last time we went out to eat. <laughs> Jesus that is contagious. But the question is, how do we get them 
from chair one to chair two. Well, let's talk about chair one just for a minute so we can really get a hold of who this person is. We're talking about people who, and, and most of them might even feel like if you ask them that they're sick, that they know Christ. You know, these are people who we are going after each and every week. And we, let me just tell you, we are a chair one church. What are you talking about, Pastor? What are you talking about? I'm talking about this, what we're doing right now. Sunday morning experience is all about drawing in the lost, whatever the cost, right? How many of you guys have, have, have ever maybe just, um, we live on the lake. How many of you guys like being on the lake, right? I love being on the lake. I love being on the water. Uh, we don't get to do it as much as I would like to, but I love being out of the water. And, and how many of you guys, just be honest, we're not going to humiliate you, but how many of you guys would say, I'm not a great swimmer? Any of you in this house say, I'm not a great swimmer? Thank you for your honesty. How many of you guys want to be dropped off in the middle of the lake? <laughs> in the deepest part of the water? No, I don't want to be dropped off in the middle of the water, but that's really the kind of people that we're talking about is those who are like, you know what, I, 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 I'm sitting here in my life and I'm struggling. I, I'm missing something in my life and I don't even really know what it is. And those people are drowning miserably and this church is all about doing whatever we can do to reach those people. We want to win the loss, whatever the cost. And this church is all about just inviting people to church and loving on people and getting them into chair two where they're saying, wow, is this what you were talking about? Is our, this is awesome! And that's what we're all about. We are here to change people's lives for eternity. And everything we do is really driven behind the idea of giving people from chair one to chair two. So, you know, you and I are surrounded constantly, continually by these people. And our goal at this church is, is to have a third of our church always packed out, a third, with people who don't know Christ. And we want to have a third of our church full of people who said, I've just made the decision to come and know Christ. And then, the other third... <laughs> the other third, to be those people to say, I, I have a relationship with God, I'm growing in Christ, I'm maturing in Christ, I've gone from the milk of God's Word as a baby in Christ, the meat of God's Word, and I'm actually doing something. I'm actually helping serve. I'm helping make a difference around me, and I'm part of the church. Alright? So, so you and I know people all around us that are like this, and I hope there's a lot of you here this morning that are in this chair. And you're saying, I haven't even, Pastor, I haven't even made up my mind yet. You know, really what I'm doing or what's going on. But I'm here and I want to tell you, we're so glad you are. You're not gonna, I'm not going to say you're not going to find a church. That's an overstatement. What I mean is, we go out of our way to love you and to make this your home. The, the second you get here, you, you're like, whoa, this is awesome. So, you know, talking about chair one people, um, and you were saying, you know, God gives us experiences so we have good material. So um, I'm going to get a shot at this one. Um, the other night I had the privilege, I was so excited to be able to uh, to go hang out with, with one of our own, uh, Officer Grant Hendricks, who's sitting right over here. Get up for Officer Hendricks. Well, he, is, he is a highway patrolman in Missouri. And he covers a stretch of highway from Jane north up to almost Neosho. Yes, is that right? That's that stretch to Joplin. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. If you're south of Joplin, you are in trouble. Because this dude is on it, man. He is awesome. So I, 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 we've been talking about it for weeks, and I've been so looking forward to it. I love doing ride alongs because I've always wanted to be a cop, but I could never be one because I just, I don't know what it is about me, but I just don't think they would take me seriously. I don't know what it is. But, but I, I, I called him up and said, hey, Grant, um, man, I'm not, he was working until like 1 o'clock, and and I said, I'm not going to be doing anything but sleeping. And uh, so I might as well just go hang out with you. Let's go get some bad guys. He's like, come on, let's do it. So we had been in Rogers until like 11 o'clock. We got home real late. And I gave him a call and said, hey, are we on? He's like, come on, let's do this. And so I met up with him. And we went for a drive. And, and it was really cool, man. That, that dude is, his car goes pretty fast. That's, that's pretty awesome. And I was like, mm, hold on to the, hold on to the handle. And, and, and he busted like three people right off the bat for speed. And it was so cool. All right. 
Um, but he gave me a few pointers before we got going. I'm thinking, okay, so if we get into a mess here, and I need to, I need to whip some dude, right? Um, do I have, are there any rules of what I can and can't do? Can you just tell me? So, well, first of all, it's very important for you to take note, Brad, that <clears throat> I recently cleaned out my squad car, and I had a, a rifle and a shotgun in the back, and now there's no gun. The only gun for you and I to share, this one, beside my hip. I thought, crud. <laughs> So if you're getting beat on, I'm going to have to go get your gun and take somebody out. So, so I checked that off right from the get-go. If, if we get in trouble, I'm done. So, so then he, he's, you know, he's pulling these people over and he's doing all sorts of really cool cop stuff. I'm loving it. And um, he's got two radios right here. And he said, if we get in trouble and I can't get to the radio, he said, one of these calls McDonald County, the other one calls Highway Patrol. And I got, I got the two mixed up. I wasn't really sure which one was which. But I thought he'd really like to use one of those. I hope we get into some trouble. I don't want him to get hurt, but I hope we get in trouble so I can say, Baker, Baker, one thing. We're in heat here. We need some backup. This is a pedestrian. About to take civil action. I want some backup. Need you to come on. We're southbound at 71, south of Stangs. Need you to come and help us out. But we didn't get any trouble like that. It was really frustrating. <laughs> so we made our way down to the strip of bars. And I thought, this is good. We're going to get some bad, bad people. We're going to get some bad people. I almost sound like I'm from Minnesota. That was weird. <laughs> so uh, we noticed this person that, that was... Uh, service might go a little bit longer than normal today, but we're only doing it once, and who cares, right? So this person slips right on past the stop sign. I said, Grant, I know that one. That one's called No Cop, No Stop. <laughs> they didn't see the cop. <laughs> that night I was cop, too. That was pluralized right there. And he said, did you, did you see that? Good buddy, partner, huh? Did you see that? I said, they didn't stop. He said, that's right, they didn't. Let's go get them. So, um... So he does uh, uh, a legal U-turn for Iowa Patrolman, and uh, does the light thing and pulls him over. And uh, what I thought was really cool is every time he approaches a vehicle, he puts his thumbprint there on the corner of the vehicle. Really cool stuff. And I, when he got back in the car, I said, why'd you do that? He said, if anything happens, they know I was right here. I thought, wow, man, you're making your mark. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. And so uh, he said, now, Brad. He said, if anything happens during these stops, if somebody gets out of the vehicle, I'm probably going to have them come back here and sit in the squad car. I need you to get out and sit in the back. I'm like, okay, okay, here it is. Very cool. I'm thinking, why are you putting a bad guy in the front? That doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, they could do some bad stuff in the front seat, whether that's, that's policy, that's protocol. So, so he pulls his car over, and this lady gets out. I'm like, we can take her. <laughs> she's, like, she's like five foot fire your redhead, we got this. Granted, if you don't have this, that's your, your sister. We can take her. So she gets out. I'm like, all right. So I go through, I get out, and I go sit in the back seat. All right? So I'm sitting in the back seat, she gets in. Oh my word, did she smell like alcohol. I was like, just looking for the window deal, couldn't find it. I mean, yeah, she had, she had, she had had some social things going on there, and she was, she was pretty, pretty bad. And, uh, and he said, okay, so have you had anything to drink tonight? Oh, this was the best interview I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what's she going to say? Because I can smell it back here, right? <laughs> and she's like, um, yeah, I just, I just had, uh, you know, a, a glass of wine. He said, is that all you have? And she said, Thank you, too. I was like, okay, okay, very good. Um, so what time was that? She said, it was like, I don't know what time it was. It was like, it was like 12, 12.30 maybe. And uh, she said, probably around 7 o'clock. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. That's, that's fresh. I smell it. Like she was maybe even drinking it in the car. That's, that's like, whoo. And so he said, okay, well, listen, um, so what I'd like to do is I would like to just take you through a series of questions. And she said, please do not give me a DUI. <laughs> and I thought, stupid, shut up. <laughs> You're giving it away. Like, just shut your mouth, lady. Just 
just be quiet. It's like, okay, well, well man, first of all, we, I don't give anything. If, if you're giving anything, it's something that you gave to yourself. So, so I won't be giving you a DUI. You might be giving it to yourself, but I'm not going to give it to you. And she said, okay, well, um, I have grandchildren. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. And I couldn't talk. If I could have talked. Oh, man. If I could have said something. I was like, what does that have to do with anything? You've been drinking. Well, how does he care if you have a grandchild? It doesn't matter. She's like, I'm going to lose my job. I'm thinking, you shouldn't be drinking. I don't So he's asking her all these questions, where she's from, this and that. I'm like, dude, are you write a book about this lady? What? I mean, he is just drilling her. And, and it's, he's, he's good. Talk. So... So then he says, all right, I'm going to need you to do some things. All right, so Misty is going to demonstrate. He didn't know you were doing this. But... So he said, all right, what I need you to do is I need you to follow my finger without moving your head. And I'm sitting back here, and I'm like, I'm going to take this test. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm honed in on his finger, and, and, he, and he said, all right, so I need you to just follow my finger without moving, ma'am, 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 without moving, without moving, without moving your head. She's, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm famous. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So, so she, man, man, without man, don't move your head. Follow my finger. So then, he's, then, so then, <laughs> he's like, I was like, I was thinking, mess with her, man, mess with her, do some zigzags, and really make it exciting. You know, she, she, so she, she wasn't doing too good. I felt sorry for the lady, and I couldn't do it. And then he started asking her, he said, um, and I'm, I'm going to make a point, so don't, you know, I'm going to make a point. So, um, so then he said, uh, he said, okay, so what I need you to do, you learned how to count in school, right? You're being sarcastic. <laughs> and she said, yes, I learned how to count in, in school. And he said, okay, what I need you to do is I need you to count backwards from 97 to like 72. And I thought, wait a minute, I can't do that. <laughs> And she's like, 97, 96. I get to 93 and I forget what the other number was. And I'm like, keep going if I can even count backwards. And the next question was, you learned your ABCs, right? She's like, yes, I learned my ABCs. She said, okay, I need you to like start with M and go backward or, or start with B and go to M. I'm like, I can't even do that. Like, what are you talking about? These questions that he was grilling her with was like really difficult. And I'm thinking, man, are we trying to make her fail or what? But you know what? She she didn't need a whole lot of help because she she wasn't, she wasn't doing too good. So Grant gets out of the car, Officer Grant. She starts bawling her eyes out. She's like, I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the back seat. And I'm like, Yeah, you're going to jail. What are you thinking? You know. And she looks back. Grant got out of the car. She looks back and she said, Are you his partner? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, I'm, I'm his pastor. <laughs> and she goes, you're his pastor! <laughs> oh, I'm so humiliated. She's bawling around. I felt sorry for the girl. You know, she's crying and crying. And, and you know, he, he brings the others back to the car so they can talk to her. And then she's like, you're going to put me in the Cuffed her and scuffed her and did all that stuff. <laughs> My lady. So, uh, so we're so we're heading back to the jail, and um, you know, <laughs> she starts she starts grilling him. She's like, "Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. And don't talk to me. Don't preach to me." <laughs> You just changed lanes without using your blinker. <laughs> She's like, ma'am, I did not. Yes, she did. I did not, ma'am. Yes, she did. Then he turns around. You just made the legal you turn. You are going over the speed limit. You are speeding. And I'm going to turn you in. And I want your badge number and the name of your manager now. <laughs> no, she said manager. She said, I'm like, what are you thinking, lady? You're in big trouble. So we're going down the road. She's just ripping them. I mean, you know, before I came to Christ, I knew how to use the F-bomb. I knew how to use it. I was good at it, but this chick, she knew how to use it. I was, I was like, 
like, not, I don't mean this disrespectful, but like she was good at it. You know what I mean? I mean, she knew how to use it because it was a part of her regular vocabulary, I, I would imagine. And, and, and uh, she was flying F bomb, F bomb, just throwing it all over the place. And I was like, okay, Grant probably feels bad for me, but I've heard the word before, so I'm really not caring. I'm just enjoying the entertainment of it all, you know? <laughs> It's pretty exciting. And, and, and so, you know, this, this poor lady, you know, so we, we, we make it down to the, to the jail, and she's just having a hard time. And I try to mix it up, and I try to tell a story, because I like telling stories. I try to tell a story to just kind of, you know, break the ice a little bit. She's, you know, in the other and I said, hey, I've got a story. I don't want to hear your story. Well, I always wanted to tell Grant a story. And she said, well, I don't want you to talk. Don't talk to me. And Grant said, well, man, if you don't mind, we're not going to talk to you. But Brad wants to tell me a story. He said, I have no idea. <laughs> so I started telling the story. I'm trying to witness to the lady, right? And she said, have you ever been in handcuffs? And I said, yes, ma'am, I have. She said, you have? <laughs> I said, well, yeah. She said, when were you in handcuffs? I said, in kindergarten when the officer came to class and I was the illustration. <laughs> <laughs> kind of threw her off a little bit, threw her off her game a little bit, you know. So, so we had, you know, we had a good time. We, we you know, we just had a great time. Um, throwing her in jail it was awesome, <laughs> and uh, you know, she had a rough night. But Grant did such a good job. He did such a good job with this lady. And you know, before the night was over, in our conversation, she looked at me and she said, "I pray every day. I pray every day." Okay. That's weird. Um, and you know what I got to thinking about? Because <laughs> I got to thinking, how many people pray every day? And they think in their mind, she said, I, I, go, I go to church. I said, you go to church? Where do you go to church? And she told me, I said, what's the name of your pastor? And she said, I don't know my pastor. <laughs> I don't know his name. I learned back in the day, that's what you ask people when they say they go to church, because really most people, they don't really go to church. And when you ask them the pastor's name and they fumble around and don't know his name, they don't go to church. And that's my cue to meet him, to go get, you don't know your pastor's name, hey, you're mine, right? It's done, right? It's so fine sacred, and I'm on it. And so, uh, so, you know, she's one of those people sitting right here. She's one of those chair one people, right? And man, before the night was over, she knew I loved her, she knew I was praying for her, and the conversation was quite pleasant by the end of the evening. And, uh, you know, I just got to thinking, there are so many people that you and I know. And, and think about this, man, she was just, her, her life was a wreck. I mean, she told me her whole story. And there was so much going on in her life, she was miserable. And, and you know what was interesting about that? They were driving like a 2015, 16, 15 BMW. And I thought, well, you've got I, I said, what, what's your husband do for a living? He owns an oil and gas company. I thought, and you mean, you mean, I'm being sarcastic now. You mean you're not happy? She was miserable. She was, she was, she was, she was medicating herself with alcohol in hopes that she would make the pain of her life go away. Right? I mean, we're talking about a chair one person here. She was miserable in her life. And I thought, man, this is why we exist as a church. It's, it's, it's to reach these chair one people every week and to fill the house with these people that, that, that are hurting and helpless and hopeless. They, 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 they think they've got all the answers, but deep down, they're, if they're honest with themselves, they realize, I'm missing something in my life. This chair's chair one. I'm missing something. So our, our desire and our goal is to get them from here as that unchurched, person, get them here in the chair one, which is a real and life-changing relationship with him. That's why at the end of every worship experience, we always, always give an invitation for people to come and know Christ, because that is what it's all about. Now you say to yourself, so how do I get there, Pastor? I'm going to tell you in that show. We're going to talk about it more next week, but listen, Wednesday nights, if you have not made a point to be here on a Wednesday night, you are missing the whole other half of this process. Wednesday nights are to get you from the milk, right, from these Sunday experiences to the meat 
where you're going to get into the Word, and you're going to get into discussions and in relationships where you're going to iron sharpen, sharpen iron, right? You're going to get sharper in the Word. You're going to get sharper in your knowledge of God. You're going to learn how to pray. You're going to learn to go deep. You're going to learn to go deep. And a lot of people think that churches that are, you know, that are just packed full of people that don't go to church are the shallow churches. They think those are the churches. Well, the only reason they have so many people attending their church is, is because they're just tri tricking people to be there and they're just, it's shallow and it's not the real gospel. And, and that's, that's, not, that's not true at all. That, that, in fact, that's, that's the opposite of the truth. Because the churches a lot of people think are so deep, like they go so deep in the Word. They go so deep that the people that are channel one people can't even understand what they're saying. They don't even understand what they're saying. We're believing. We're believing for your salvation. That Christ would be uh, exalted in your life. And they say, you know, hallelujah. Nobody knows what hallelujah means. They say big words. They, they use words that are terms that really only people in the church understand. And, and what good does that do? We're totally missing the purpose altogether. If we want to get people from this chair to this chair, we have to do things differently in order to attract those people and teach them from here to here. And that's what we're all about. And really the deepest churches are the ones that are reaching people like crazy for Christ because the, the greatest rescues that happen are in the deep. The greatest rescues that happen are in the deepest waters. I asked uh, just a, a little while ago if you like playing in the water, if you like swimming and everything, and, and I want you to think about the fact that, you know, imagine being out in the middle of the water, you're in the deepest part of the lake, and there's this person that is drowning miserably, but they're, but they're quite collected and calm, and you say, do you need help? No, I'm fine. <laughs> No, 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 you're drowning. You're, you're about to die. You're about to lose your life. You're drowning miserably. Can I, can I throw you a, a life ring? No, I'm not good. What? Are you sure? Can I, can I help you? No, I'm good. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. Now, they believe the life ring can help them. But they haven't grabbed onto it. And you see, Jesus is the life ring. And you can say all you want. I pray every day. I believe in that life ring. Every day I believe that that life ring can save you. And grab on to it. Cling to the ring. Hold on to that ring for everything you're worth. And don't let go of the ring until you've completely been reeled in to safety. A lot of times people are sitting in this chair and they're drowning miserably and they're like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. You're not. You think you're good. You're saying you're good, but you're really not good. You're really drowning. And I want to help you. But what they need to do is they need to cling to Jesus and grab on to Him and hold on to Jesus with everything in their word. Not just pray every day. Not even just, not even just read the Bible because that doesn't save you. Some people are even already coming to the table Right? But they're still sitting in this chair, and that doesn't save you. But getting in this chair is about saying, God, I admit that I've been hopeless without you. I've been helpless. And, and, and maybe you're lying from the outside. You might have it all. You might have it all. And be totally and completely miserable without God. Hopeless without Jesus. When you get here, our desire is to get you into that place where you have that real and life-changing relationship with Him. A relationship with Christ. Not, not, not a knowledge of Christ. A relationship with Christ. Right? We're not, we're not just a church of giving out information. It's about application. Mm -hmm. Just stand with us this morning. I wanted to share this scripture with you. In John chapter 6, in verse 44, it says this. Whoa. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. It's not enough that we just go out and invite people. And I hope you guys do. I hope you take invites every single week. 
And I hope you look for people like Brad's talking about because we're surrounded by them. You know, I think so often believers get in this bubble and it's almost like we've got these blinders on our eyes and we go out in public and we're like, we don't want to see. We don't want to see what it's really like because if you open your eyes, those kind of people who are in the deep grounding are all around us. When you go to Walmart, when you go to the gas station, when you go to school, when you go to college, when you go to work, they're all around us. But it takes us taking time to just slow down enough to say, hey, listen, I want to help you. You've got to come to my church. You've got to come and you hand them one of those invites. But you know, that's not enough. This scripture, what this scripture tells us is the only way that somebody makes a decision to move from chair one to chair two is if the Father, if the Spirit of God draws them. So it's not enough. Man, you can have all the words to say. You can tell them the Bible backwards and forwards. But it's God's Spirit that moves on people and moves them to hear. It's the presence of Almighty God that does that. So when you begin to invite your lost friends or you begin to see strangers, you know, that opportunity when you were with Grant that night was to sit in the back seat and pray. How cool would it be if every officer just had an intercessor in the car? You know what I mean? Just like get in the car and pray because those guys are the ones going out. And yeah, we can, we can laugh and call them bad guys, but they're, they're the lost. They're the hurting. They're the hopeless. They're the ones more than anybody else who need to come and sit in chair one. Guys, we got to pray. we got to pray for those people. And you know, I would encourage you today, and this is what we're going to pray over you today, is that God would open the door for you. For you to invite someone. For you to go out and get someone to come in and sit and share one. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Father God, we are so thankful. God, we are so thankful that at one point in our lives, someone shared the message of Jesus Christ with us. God, I'm so thankful that the Word of God came to life and it infected our lives. God, and you brought us into a real and a life-changing relationship with you. God, our life has never been the same. God, it is our greatest desire, God, that we would not just come in to this setting, God, to the table, and we would just get overly fat. But God, that we would push away from the table and we would go out to the world. And we would open our eyes and we would see our neighbors who are drowning in the deep. And God, we would go to work and we would see our co-workers who are drowning in the deep. God, I pray today, God, that it would break our hearts. God, I pray that you would give us opportunity. God, as we leave here today, God, I pray that we would not just think that we're leaving this for another work week, that we're leaving just for the festivities of the day, but God, as we walk out those double doors, that we realize we are walking into the mission field. We don't need to get on and fly across the nation to go to a mission field. We need to get in our car and go across the community. We need to go to Walmart. We need to go to our neighbors. God, these are the mission fields. God, I pray that our heart would be broken, God, and that you would give us a boldness to speak out and to say, I want to help you. I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and get my arms dirty in reaching the lost in our community. God, I pray that you would empower your people today. God, I pray today, Father God, that you would empower us to go out into our world and to reach the chair one people that are so far from you, God, and that we would lead them into that real and life-changing relationship, Jesus. You might be one of those this morning with heads bowed, eyes closed. You might be one of those that are sitting in chair one. And you'd say, Pastor, you know, the person you're talking about today is me. That's me. I, 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 have, I have maybe a knowledge of Christ, but I don't have a relationship with Christ that is real and life-changing and contagious. And I, I want to move from, from chair one to chair two. I, I want to become that. I want to be born again and become that infant believer that is, that is growing on the milk of God's Word and the community of God's people, relationships. I want to I grow in Christ. I want 
to be a believer. I want to be born again. If that's you today. You know, it's really all about just admitting that you have fallen short with the standard that God has laid out. And all of us have fallen short, the Bible says. Each and every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. It means none of us are perfect as Jesus is perfect. And that's why He came and died for us. But when you admit that you're, that you're, that you're fallen and that you're not perfect, that you are a sinner like me, when you believe upon the life ring of Jesus Christ, you believe that that life ring will save you, then it's about confessing Him as Lord and, and clinging to that ring and committing to have a relationship with Him that is life-changing. And if that's you today, if you want to move from chair one to chair two, this day is really all about you. We want to lead you through a prayer that will change your life forever. And I'm going to count to three. And when I do, if that's you today, I want you, with everything inside of you, I want you to raise your hand and do it with pride and say, I want Jesus in my life. That goes for those of you that are watching online as well. You need Jesus in your life. An eternity in God's presence awaits. As I count to three, I want to know who you are and we want to pray with you as a church today. Here we go. One, two, life change. Three, who are you in this house? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. I see your hand. Anybody else? Amen. I see your hand. Anybody else today? Anybody else? You want to go? You say, Pastor, I want chair one to chair two. I see your hand. Anybody else today? Thank you. Amen. I see your hand. Amen. And for those of you online as well, I know that God sees your hand. I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you as a church. Pray this prayer and mean it with all of your heart. And eternity awaits. Heaven will be your home. And God will use you mightily in His purpose and plan for you on this planet while you are here. Say this prayer. Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. The name above every name. I know that I've sinned. I know that I fall short in every way. I ask that you would forgive me, God. Of everything I've ever said. Every thought I've ever had. Every act I've ever committed that has displeased you in any way. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the life ring. The only life ring that can save you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I dedicate myself right now to a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus. Pray this in His name. Amen. 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 Give a hand to those and for God the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.